Hey guys, Sara here. Welcome back to my channel and another video. This is my part two of my Aussie ink swap, ink swatching. Um, I will put up into the cards now my part one, which is all my kind of the, the warmer reds and pink inks that I got. And this is the blues and greens. There are eight inks in this one. Um, I was going to do seven and seven, but I decided at the last minute that the first ink I'm going to swatch actually belongs in this category. Um, I was very lucky to be sent ink uh, from Deb and she has showered with me with the most incredible ink. Um, definitely check out that first video and you know what, let's not do any rambling. We're going to jump straight in because I'm really excited. First up, so I originally put this in the warm category because it has like this bronze warm shimmer. But as I looked through the vial more, it definitely looks green in there. I've never, I actually haven't tried any of these samples. So I'm going in completely blind and I'm just like literally looking through the plastic of the color. And that's how I did my two groups. So I'm just going to aggravate this. If you have watched that first video, I would love to know if there was an ink from there that jumped out at you. Come on. Oh, it's really, doesn't want to go anywhere that shimmer. All right, there we go. So this is Dominant Industry Autumn Forest. And I don't um, have any bottles of Dominant Industry, but I actually really like the design of their bottle. But I've set myself a goal this year that if I'm going to buy any bottles, they have to be secondhand because... I feel like the universal experience is no one ever finishes an ink bottle. I'm just trying to be more conscious of like the consumerism part of all of this and the waste part. So that's a little, a little rule or guideline that I've set myself. I've just seen some of this poke out from under and I'm really excited. Wow. So this is a green ink. It's like a khaki green definitely dark on the darker side but you can see the browns but what's really interesting is as it dries like when you first put it down the shimmer actually isn't that obvious it's almost as if it's actually just reading as the browner tones of the ink and just watching it now as it dries you can see the bits of shimmer pooling and it almost gives it like this whole other layer to it um I don't think I would have guessed that like a bronze, a warm orangey bronze and a khaki are going to complement each other. But just looking at it there, it, it definitely does. Uh, I'm just trying to look at the different kind of undertones of it. It's, it's really hard to tell because I think that that bronze is definitely swaying my opinion. But as you go to where it's pooling a bit more I feel like you can see the bits of blues and yellows or like the yellow more that makes up that green whereas down here it's it looks a bit warmer with that brownie bronze I'm just going to agitate it again for the writing sample because it has settled first cab off the rank and that's a pretty cool ink have a look at the writing sample. Dominant. Definitely made the right decision, including it in this video though. I think that the shimmer looks more subtle in the writing sample, but I can see it as it tries. And you know what? You're getting some really nice shading there as well. And this is just a dip pen. Not just, but you know what I mean. Oh, I really like that ink. Depending on the light, like looking at it from an angle where it pulls, it almost looks a bit more pinky purple. And from like lower lighting, it definitely it looks more brown, that shimmer. So even the shimmer itself is quite dynamic, um, which is really exciting. I wonder this might be an ink um, that's sensitive, and I say that in a good way, like sensitive to different paper types because it has so many layers to it. I feel like 
uh, it might be one that yeah reads quite differently depending on the paper. Maybe this would be a good ink to do as like a bit of a, a deep dive. Um, if that's something you'd be interested in, let me know, I'm trying to do it on like different paper samples and things like that. All right, moving on. This is a, oh, I should have said at the beginning, I'm going to butcher pronunciations. I'm really sorry. I'm trying my best. If you know any of the phonetics, let me know. This is a Yung Jing Tang Lu Ming, and I had never heard of this ink brand before, but in that first video, the first one I swatched was one of theirs, and I really loved it. I think there's two possibly in this swatching video. So looking at it through the vial, it looks like a really punchy green, a dark green, but really super saturated. It looks like... Um, <laughs> like uh, like that syrup that you put in like milkshakes, like you get from like an old school uh, milk bar or like fish and chip shop, like lime syrup for a lime milkshake or lime spider. And I actually, now that I say that, I have no idea if spiders are a Australian thing only. And actually, could you get a, did you get syrup in a spider? Going off on a tangent here. A spider for in case they are super niche, was a drink that I only ever had at like birthday parties. And I think at like, like when you go bowling for a birthday party and it was fizzy drink. So like a, you'd get a Coke spider and so it would be Coke and then they'd put a scoop of ice cream in it and the ice cream would interact with the fizz and kind of go like foamy, but a good foam and you would drink it. And I think maybe you did put syrup in them because you used to get blue spiders and it was just basically all sugar and your tongue would be blue and everything else. But uh, that's kind of what that, it looks like in there, just that really fake saturated sugar filled color. Oh, I couldn't be more wrong Look at that. I think I was dilly-dallying too much that it kind of sunk into the page a bit more. That is just a, a really beautiful dark green, a bit of like a forest green. Um, doesn't look as poppy or lolly as it does in the vial at all. Because I was rambling away, it did sit on the page a little bit there. So it'd be interesting to see how the writing sample looks in comparison. It's definitely saturated because it's like stained my syringe. So I'm going to need to do a little bit more cleaning of that in a minute. Um, but that looks cool. I wonder if I hadn't been gas bagging, I wonder if we would have got a bit more shading because this is just going to bleed through, isn't it? A little bit. All right, let's do a writing sample and see. See, I either swatch and don't talk because writing and talking is hard or I just go off on a tangent and forget the actual task at hand. This is Yun Ming. This feels like a bit of a wet ink and definitely a saturated one. It's actually feathering a little bit on my Stalogy paper, but it's just a really nice dark green. Interesting that it is feathering there. And actually looking at it now, just as I've been chatting, I feel like it actually might dry lighter than how it originally goes down, which makes sense. Most ink does that, but quite noticeably around the edges, this is turning into a much lighter less saturated kind of green and I actually am wondering if it has a little bit of sheen just in there. I think it might, a bit of like a black sheen. Let's come back to that one when it properly dries to have a look but it's definitely saturated, it's stained my um, syringe there a bit so what I'm gonna do is just pause, change out my water and with the magic of editing I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. Next up is the first blue of the swatching season. And this is Van Diemen's Tassie Seasons Summer Wine Glass. Sorry, 
Van Diemen's Tassie Seasons Summer Wineglass Bay. It shouldn't be a mouthful. I don't know why I struggled, but I did. Just as this autumn forest dries, <laughs> that is such an incredible ink. Look at that. All right. Looking at it through the vial, it looks like a kind of medium blue, maybe a touch on the lighter side. Again, it looks quite saturated and bright, which makes sense because that is what I said to Deb I wanted to challenge myself with. So I'm going to do a little bit differently so it doesn't sit there. Let's do this one first. There you go. Kind of is like those. Bleh. The first thing it makes me think of is those like really loved blues, like um, Conpecchi or Fire and Ice. I wonder if that's actually lighter than both of them. You can see on the edges there, it can go down quite light. To be completely honest, I'm not drawn to these types of blues. It's just something I would never see myself picking up but the but is when I was doing my top five um, pen wishlist videos I did the headings in Conpecchi I think in a, a vintage like just dipping a vintage pen that I'm trying to restore in and I actually really enjoyed writing with it and looking back I actually think the ink looks really nice on the page so I think this this type of blue is one I actually need to give a go like I need to try it out because when I did the one time I did looking I both enjoyed the writing experience and looking back I think it looks nice so I need to get over this like bias I guess I just sprayed some on the page here um bias I have towards them so just give me a moment so this is Van Demons, which is so Tazzy Seasons, and what do we say? Summer Wine Glass Bay. I should be able to fit one more swatch in there. When it dries, I think I actually have, like, my, my blues page is in here, so we can go and flip back and compare that to the other ones. You know what I was finding interesting about ink is, you know, to, to oversimplify it, I was like, okay, I'm going to split them into two batches, cool and warm. But even just with these three swatches, that is actually a lot, you know, this is supposed to be the cools, right? But that is to me a lot warmer than, than this and that could be somewhere in between. It, it just shows that ink as a, as a creative medium is just so, so dynamic. It just has so many options to it, uh, which is really cool. So next up is another shimmer ink um, and it is this brand again, Yunjing Tang Wang Shu. And that looks like a very dark blue maybe even a blue black and I think it's a blue shimmer in there so I did um I jumped on to so Deb who was um who sent me ink is the same Deb of fountain pen supplies and I'm pretty sure they actually stock this brand on their website and I haven't come across it before so if you are seeing if any of these are ones you really like I would definitely jump onto their website and have a look because it was a it was an ink brand unknown to me until these swatching videos which is the best discovery not just discovering a new ink but discovering a whole new brand yeah. didn't necessarily do the best spacing for this page
Oh, I love that. Wow. So that is a dark blue. You can definitely see some purple through there, some gray through there. Oh, I really like that. Maybe a touch of black. Like I can see why I kind of thought it was blue back, but then as you go in, it almost gets warmer. And I, I'm just trying to confirm what that shimmer color is. I think it is a very light blue. I don't think it's silver. I think it does have some color to it. It's also not one that I think is going to then be like more obvious in the writing sample. But that is a super cool ink. I really, really like that. All right. The first thing that jumps out of me as I've just written the brand name is that to me reads like a, a truer blue black where it kind of has like a green undertone to it. Um, whereas like I don't get in that writing sample the warmth that was in there, but I also didn't re-agitate the bottle. So that could have been part of the reason. But that's just the first impression. But a really lovely ink, really legible, which is always a plus for me. Oh, I really like that swatch. And look, as it dries and it, you get to where it's lighter, you can see the bits of green that kind of sometimes make up that blue-black vibe. And look where it's like super chunky and pooling there. It's so deep and dark. Really excited to see what that one looks like once it's dry. So halfway there, we've got four more to go, but I'll just give some close-ups of these ones just to have a looky-loo. So starting out up the top here is Dominant Industry Autumn Forest, like a khaki green with a bronze shimmer, but that sometimes really does look pink in some lights, depending on where you go. Next up is Yung Jing Tang Lu Ming, which is like a, I'd call that a forest green. Van Diemen's Tassie Seasons Summer Wine Glass Bay, and then another one of the Yung Jing Tang Wang Shu. Two shimmers, a blue and a green. The shimmers are actually my favourite of this page, which is funny. I never usually pick a shimmer as my favourite. Um, these ones speak to, I guess, why I said give me like the, well, I want to try the, the brighter inks. I just there's something about super saturated bright inks that I don't gravitate to. Um, so this is why I'm wanting to challenge myself and expand my repertoire a little bit, whereas that's probably more in my wheelhouse, the, the undertone ink even with the shimmer. All right, next up is another brand I'd never heard of, which is, oh, I'm going to mess this up, Fan Yang Tan, F-A-N-Y-A-N-T-A-N. I think it might be another Chinese brand. Um, in the ink name, I have two of these, I think, and in the ink names of them, it says S6, and then it's got the name, so I'm not sure if that's almost like, you know, like Van Diemen's, but then Tassie Seasons is like a a line, so I don't know if S6 is a line. Um, this is a, a green ink. Um, it looks like a yellowy green, but it also looks very saturated. Um, so this is called Meng Yu Hai, I'm going to say. Uh, let's jump in and give this one a go. I think on for these ones I have three greens and a blue. These brands that I, I haven't used before, if you have used them and you have a favourite that you think now that you've discovered this brand, definitely check out this, you know, this ink or this is their most famous, let me know in the comments below. Um, always, I just, even if I never actually buy the sample, I always, you know, write it, I, I still look and research and write it down because I just find the exploration process really interesting and rewarding which probably only people who watch this video could understand anyone who's like not in fountain pens probably wouldn't understand that and that is not what I was expecting to see I thought that was going to be quite a dark yellowy brown green and it's actually come up quite light you can see the bits of brown along the border but that's actually quite a light almost like spring green and there's like bits of that 
kind of fluoro vibrancy to it, which just goes to show you, you never really know what it's going to be like. So I'm just going to close this up so I can look at the spelling. I would imagine that that is going to be quite a nice shader because you can even just see the variations of color just in the swatch. So this is Fan Yang Tang Meng Yu Hai, which I know I'm not saying correctly. It all but it has um I wasn't sure if the writing sample was gonna come out on like the these like lighter, brighter tones or the, the browner ones, and I think it's come out more in the, the brownery ones. Um I would be I think this might be one that needs to go in a wet writer, whereas some of these inks like this one actually felt quite wet on the nib. That one did feel on the drier side. Not not dry, like not like it's a bad thing, but just um, comparing them all. So next up is the same brand, um, and this is a blue. And again, I was going to say it looks like a quite a saturated blue in there, but, you know, we knew with that one it, it came out differently. And it, I would say that that is a medium to dark blue, and it is called Hun, Hun or Hun Wu, and it has that S6 there again. I love when I manage with the syringe to suck up like the exact right amount. That was exactly one drop. And that makes me happy because I'm a nerd like that. Alrighty. Turny, 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 turny. Just taking it in. Wow. So that is, yeah, pretty saturated blue. Um, if you've watched my videos before, you know that I am in a bit of a love-hate relationship with blue. I'm just not drawn to them, but then when I force myself to kind of use them or explore them, I end up liking it. So, yeah, we're in we're in an interesting relationship. I'm trying to think of, I, I don't know if that one is reminding me of Diamine. Sargasso so, C, maybe? Um, there's a vibrancy to it, middle blue, probably on the on the warmer side of the blues, you know, compared to those two. But I'm just going to see if I can jump back and find my, my blue page. So I was comparing this one to Compeki, which isn't the case. That's a lot darker. And I was doing the other one to Sargasso. And that again, oh, I can kind of see where I was coming from. Maybe it's more like Robert Oster flaming blue in there. So just do a writing sample of this one. This doesn't feel as dry as the one above. I feel like this is just going to be like a well-behaved ink. I don't have anything to back that up. That's just what it's just what I feel. So two inks left. One of them I have heard of. One of them I haven't. This is the one I haven't heard of. It's another Yun Jing Tang, and it's called Wild Pear in Snow. It is green with a green shimmer, and I don't know if this can come through, but that is just jam-packed with shimmer. Like whether you agitate it or not, the whole sample is shimmer. It's, I've, it's incredible. And I, I mean, it could maybe be that it's just the sample I got, but I don't think so. 
Um, so pretty, pretty excited to see what that looks like on the page. And I reckon, why don't we go all out and do more than do a bigger drop <laughs> to really see what, or how all that shimmer is looking. Oh, I hope the camera can catch that even in the swatch. Um, you can see it catching the light. It does settle pretty quickly though. All right. Whoa, wow. <laughs> that is so intense. Okay, look, to be completely honest, I can't actually see myself using that. That's way too bright for me. It looks like an apple green with just a film of shimmer over it. But even though it's not necessarily an ink that I'm drawn to, I can still appreciate it, if that makes sense. You know, it's it might not be for me, but I can understand why some people would see that as spectacular. It is so punchy and happy. It just makes you smile. I, you know, I lifted up my measuring cup and I just smiled. I'm, I'm pretty confident the shimmer is a green shimmer. I need to wait for it to dry and pool a bit more because at the moment the entire thing just looks, just looks shimmery. Um, wow. I would imagine in the chromatography, you'd be getting some, some yellow in there, but for me, that's just like a real apple green. And I'm not sure why, but this one has, I guess, the Australian, oh, it's not the, Austra the Australian, the English translation, whereas the other ones didn't. But this is called Wild Pear in Snow. I'm also going to imagine that this one's going to bleed through the page. Last but definitely, definitely not least, this is one that's actually been on my list wanting to try, so I'm excited that it was included. It's a Pilot Iroshizuku Chiku Rin, um, which is a green. I'm just amazed by that. That's so intense. So I have liked every Pilot Iroshizuku ink I have tried or swatched and I'm yet to actually ink up into a pen. Uh, they just always feel like good quality, consistent, but also beautiful inks. And I think that they get a lot of love out there and I don't think that that love is overhyped at all. I completely understand why that love is there because I, I share that love as well. All right, our last measuring cup swirl. So I do wonder if that is also maybe just a touch too light for me. Um, it'd be interesting to see once it actually dries, if parts of it do dry darker. You know, if you look at it compared to the other greens on this page, you can see that that one has a lot more yellow in it. Um, it's almost like a, a yellow, maybe a touch of brown, like there's a almost a hint of khaki in there maybe. Just do the writing sample. It'll be interesting to see when it dries. And actually, just as I do the, the writing sample, the swatch, my first impression was that it's going to be too bright, but the writing sample doesn't actually feel like that, and I'm already seeing some really nice shading. Which just goes to show how important writing samples are because the swatches can be deceiving in good ways and in bad ways. Um, and that's also why I actually really like swat, um, doing the writing samples with a fine nib because most of my pens are a fine nib. That's kind of my sweet spot. So I feel like it's giving me hopefully a more realistic um, example of what it would be like in a pen. So, uh, that is the end of these swatches and the incredible inks I got from Deb as part of the 
Aussie ink swap. So I'll just do a close up here of the four that were on this page, which is the Fan Yang Tang Meng Yu Hai. Um, and what's really interesting is as it dries, you can, you can, this is the one where I was rambling. So the ink pulled a little bit before I swelled it. And you can actually see in there that the browns that have almost settled to the bottom, I guess. And where it's lighter, you get the more vibrant greens. And where it's darker is where that browny black really shines through, which is really interesting. I think you get some really cool maybe shading with that one. Um, that's got a lot of complexity, that ink. Next up, same brand, um, Hun Wu, which is a, a blue. I think I said not, I didn't have too much to say about this one. It's not really drawn to colors like that, but there is something quite nice about it. I would imagine um, that that's just going to be quite a nice ink. And if you do like blues, I, I think that might hit the sweet spot for some people. It's not super dark. It's not super light. It has a warmth to it, which is um, nice. Uh, yeah, next up then the Yunjing Tang Wild Pear in Snow, which is just fun. I didn't do a flip over. Let's have a look. Yeah, that one bled like crazy, but it's still drying, so I don't want to move it too much. There is just so much shimmer in that wild. That, that ink is just a party. And lastly, Pilot Iroshizuku Chiku Rin, which is a, a yellowy green um, and as it dries I'm actually liking it more and more my first impressions where it's a bit too bright but looking at you know this writing sample here some really nice shading I think it's quite legible um, and the darker bits of it I, I really really like so that is the end of this video um, as I said at the beginning I'll just see if I can do this these were the first ones I swatched so if you haven't had a look, I would jump on and have a look at the, that video because there's some really beautiful ink in there. And then these were the, the blues and greens. As always, guys, if there's an ink in here that jumps out at you, let me know. Um, I love discussing ink with all of you. It is, well, it can be the highlight of my day. I really, really enjoy it. Um, and if you could hit like and subscribe, that would be awesome also, I cannot wait for another ink swatching video that I get to share with you guys hopefully really soon. Thanks everyone and I'll see you all later. Bye.